Gotta reload so I can tell if we're actually on the air or not. Oh, I guess I should do the, the pre-show. Pre-show version. Pre-show version. Okay, we are live. Good. Oh, wait, am I doubling up in the sound? What's going on here? Nope, it's muted. Good. Good, 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 good. Everything seems to be working. I think it's working. You guys tell me. Is it working? Can you hear the me? Can you hear the game? Is everything working all right? Oh, Lily. I miss your voice, Lily. I would love to hear more of your voice. <laughs> hey there, Undead Nicole. Good. I'm glad things are working. Uh, we have got big plans today. Actually, we have very small plans. Uh, we have... We're planning to have me and Brant sit and play the game as usual, and uh, we're going to have a guest in here. Uh, his name's Eric Anderson. He's a programmer, and we will enjoy that. Actually, let me just... I'm pretty sure I know how to spell his name that I've got it right, but let me just double check it on Slack here real quick. Yep, I got it right. So, uh, <laughs> I got that song from Moana stuck in my head, uh, because... <laughs> As usual, I'm using the, um, <laughs> State of Decay 2 control scheme, which is not very effective in State of Decay 1. Uh, it's funny how you just build this muscle memory in and, uh, just completely lose track of what you're actually doing. But yeah, I was just reading some uh, some new uh, lines were just written uh, about to be recorded uh, by our writer uh, Andy Collins, and one of the uh, one of the stories he had a survivor telling uh, reminded me of Moana. So now I've got the Moana song in my head, uh, and it won't get out because it's already in my head a lot anyway. Because my children just sing it constantly. Who needs snacks? I know I don't need snacks. I'm better than snacks. Yeah, okay, cool. That is how that works. I was, had some questions about that before. <laughs> and then Nicole says, I love Moana so much. I do too. So I didn't see it in the theater. I actually saw it when my uh, family brought it home. Uh, I, watched, I watched the baby while my wife took uh, the girls to go see it. And uh, so I didn't really uh, get to enjoy it until late, but man, was it worth it. So what, what breakdown level are we playing at right now? Let's so, say, yeah, level two. Okay, blunt weapons, automatic pistols. Here, kill 100 zombies with a car door. Hey, we're gonna be Mowing zombies down with cars today. That's going to be the, 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 the special thing we're doing uh, for the challenge. Uh, done plenty of this right here. Play for 10 hours, definitely. Prepare 12 snacks. I guess we need to get a legit home site then, huh? <laughs> Sabbath the Drakkard uh, says my seventh period English two is watching. Is watching what? Is watching this? You got your got your English class watching Twitch right now? Wow, that is pretty impressive. I I I'm kind of surprised my my kids in elementary school come home talking about the stuff that they've uh, that they've watched, um, like YouTube videos and things that they've shared uh, in class. And I'm like, school is just real. I remember they'd have to wheel in a TV if we wanted to watch anything fun. Now apparently they just like just throw the internet up on a big screen anytime they want to in, in the middle of school. Oh, uh, holy crap. Okay, as much as... I want a car. Can I please find a car? Hmm, oh, here's a nice car. Oh, uh, oh, wait. Uh, that's not gonna work. All right. Didn't I have a snack? Yeah, there's my snack. There's my snack. Do do do. <laughs> Mon Prince says that uh, his niece loves trolls. Uh, I assume that you mean the show trolls and not, like, internet trolls. 
Well, I need a car. If I'm gonna, like, do this challenge. I know there's usually a uh, military truck over here. I don't know. E even at breakdown level two, even that low, you, you still see an immediate drop off in the number of cars available. Oh, wait, I think. Ah, uh, there's one up there. Okay, okay, we're good. Do, 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 do. Hey, Brant's here. Yeah, let's. I need to talk to my agent. Brant just came in. There was no pepperoni pizza in the green room. <laughs> I brought pizza. I just ate it all myself. Oh, you're the reason. Oh, look at that shower of blood. Who's uh, who's joining us? Uh, Eric's gonna be joining us in a minute. Eric will. Okay. Yep. So he, uh, <laughs> I saw him walking to lunch with Susan. So I think Susan's probably giving him some pointers. Everybody loved Susan so much last time. That's right. That uh, you know, we, he's he's getting some uh, some instructions from her. So uh, when he gets back, we will start the show properly. What time is it right Let's this see second? Who we got. We got like one minute. Hey, Mom Prince. Hey, everybody. Hey. Sabartha so Drackard. Sorry, it's kind of a hard name to. Defiant Dragon, All Garlic right, no. Burp. There's Dan. Getting distracted. Dan, thank you for stopping by my uh, my stream on so, s s s sun Sunday. Sunday. I don't know. Sabbath of Drackard is actually watching this in English class with their entire class. Really? Yes. So we've got. So it says we've got you know X number of viewers on here. We've actually got way more. And I am an English. I have an English degree. Oh wow! So you can tell so, them exactly how valuable that is. No, they're gonna see just how poor my education was. <laughs> Where'd you go to college? Washington State University. Oh, nice. Moo you. <laughs> Where the cows are happy because they outnumber humans. Let's see. Satan is Jason. Duke Steele. Got a whole pile of people in here. Hi, everybody. So I just realized we're here to hit zombies with cars. That's what we're here to do today. We're still doing that? Yep, that's what we're doing. Don't hit that zombie. Yeah, I'm gonna hit these zombies. There you go. Splash. Oh man, I miss the cars in State of Decay 2. I mean, these cars, these cars are great. Man, the cars in State of Decay 2, so much better. Hey, hey Eric is here. Oh. Okay, so I think we can start, start start the show properly first. Let me switch away from my communist ways. Yes, Connie. So that, so that uh, Brant can, can do this. Hey, would you here? like to have the headset? Do I need it? Do you want to hear the game? No. Oh. Do you want to hear the game? You don't uh, have to. No, you can't, you can't hear it. the game. All right, all right. <laughs> I want to hear your lovely voice. Okay, so so everybody, uh, first we're going to officially start the stream. So, Cerezo. boom! Everything gets bigger when we start the stream. Uh, so welcome to the Undead Lab stream. We're uh, going to be, we're here with Brant Fitzgerald Hi. and myself, as always, Jeffrey Card, and then this is Eric Anderson. Actually, in case you're, Hello. you're not sure who you're looking at, this is Eric Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, nice. just, just, nice just remember graphic, that. Nice graphic design there, Jeffrey. So, so I made that for Jeff Salt, and his name is much smaller. <laughs> yeah. So that was, it was a little bit harder to fit that in there, but I think it works. <laughs> so so Eric, is uh, he's a programmer uh, at Undead Labs. Uh, he's You've been here for several months now, haven't you? It's almost been a year now. Wow. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, been a long like time. 10 months. Yeah, what? since last May. Normally, uh, we get people in here a little sooner, and we just accidentally completely spaced on Eric when he showed up. And so. I think you were actually gone when I started for that a while. You were like on vacation be. for a while. And so you just missed that whole thing. I still missed <laughs> <laughs> I came back, there's this weird guy uh, working on our game. It was strange. <laughs> But uh, so if you guys have any questions, so Eric is a programmer. Uh, we can't actually, I don't think we can say what he's working on exactly right now. Uh, you can safely st say State of Decay 2. Well, yeah, that's yeah. True. he's working on State of Decay 2. He's working on very important, beloved parts I mean, of State of Decay 2. Can we say the general area? Like, nope. it's common stuff? Uh, no, we usually don't. No. Yeah. All right. Until, All right. We, until we can I'm say not... specifics, yeah. Okay. But I, I can say that, that one of one of his assigned I, I can't maybe I shouldn't say this but I'll say it anyway. Uh, <laughs> one of his um, assignments to work on this milestone is something that we initially weren't didn't think we were going to get into the game, but uh, we heard so many requests and so many positive feedbacks so that we changed the schedule and got it in. So Eric is going to be working on fan favorite features this yes. milestone. So yes. you guys <laughs> you guys suck up to him as hard as you possibly can, okay? No, I'm so <laughs> pumped about it. I'm I'm really excited. I actually was gonna try to sneak. <laughs> I'm, gonna, like, I'm like, I'm gonna maybe do some overtime to try to make this happen. And it showed up on my plate, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> if I don't have to do overtime, that is fine by me. All right, I would, I would like to acknowledge that we have quite the murderer's row in chat right now. We've got Big Ed, we've got Han, we've got Corey, Co or sorry, Cot Jockey, Cerebral, Stonewall, holy crap, Luke has. Stonewall? I don't see Stonewall very often. 
He's, uh, been you know. ages. I mean, I think we saw, I think he came into one of our previous streams recently, but we haven't seen very much of that guy. Good to see you again, buddy. I chat with him on occasion on uh, on Twitter. Okay, cool. But uh, Luke has, my gosh. Then there's Mont Prince. Then we got a cot jockey. Don't you have somewhere to be? I mean, maybe work? <laughs> Come on. Uh, so Garlic Burp wonders, uh, he, he suspects that you might be uh, working on the yoga pants feature um, of the game. I, I asked. <laughs> but that's no. If you want yoga pants, uh, we got to get Scott Alba in that's, here. That's, that's the guy you want to talk to. <laughs> he decides who gets pants and who doesn't. Oh, so. there's there's Steineken. Wow, we've got everybody. Thanks every, to Kuro Man. There's too many to name because I'm old and can't read very well either. But thanks everyone <laughs> for showing up. Appreciate it. We're uh, we're 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 counting down to the days when we can actually start talking about State of Decay 2. Yeah. E3, E3 is just right around the corner. As soon as we hit that point, we're, there's going to be so much more we can say. We'll have to get Eric back in here. We're going to have to get all the people you met back in there to talk about the actual stuff they're working on. And we'll have to get actual State of Decay 2 on the screen. Um, I'm but guessing we'll, be, we'll yes. be streaming quite a bit more than once a month, once uh, once this thing Once the floodgates going. open, yeah. yeah. If, I, if we can get, unfortunately... Um, I, I wish that, 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 that you know it was possible for, for me and Brant to just do this full time, but unfortunately each of us also has very important chunks of content oh that we're trying to make it for this Don't, game. Let's not talk about how much it is. <laughs> okay. So are we actually planning to stream Sata K2 before release? That's my hope, yeah. I think so that basically we're hoping that once we uh, kind of I mean, we're, we, you know, because this game has a publisher, you know, we're not in charge of the marketing push and how it works, but there's going to be a window at some point where we can start streaming uh, what we're actually working on. Okay, excellent. And so that's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. We're just not, we, we just will be at least a couple of months before we're, before we're ready for it. Well, that's exciting. Uh, yeah. So... I, as all okay, so guys, I'm going to try to do a lot better uh, reading the actual chat this time around because that's that's a, a weakness that I've been showing recently. I just get so excited, and I just want to talk about things. And <laughs> you talk what? Yeah, and I've got I, unfortunately I it's a one way, it's a one look, way street. Look, look, look! I unlocked something for you. What did you unlock? Dead man. Oh, a rare achievement. Destroy five bloaters at rate of level two or higher. Nice. And I'm dying because of it. Yeah. I made the ultimate Aww. sacrifice to get that. Well, you, you're Boy, dying as one of my characters, so I don't know if that's really your Aww. sacrifice. <laughs> I'm totally up for sacrificing it's the best these characters. Kind of sacrifice. Yeah. So tired. Oh my goodness. Let's see here. So I'm gonna do my best to actually read you guys' comments, and uh, I'm gonna try to like, yeah, because this is a one-way thing. If words are coming out, words are not going in. So, unfortunately, sometimes that's true in meetings as well. So, <laughs> Taylor says only 6% of people got that achievement. I wonder, like, what are... I'd love to look at some achievements, so just broad achievement stats here. Like, are there any achievements that are gotten by more than 50% of people? Do most people who buy games just start them once and then just never touch them again? I, I, I will... I'm surprised that they even have uh, stats on the achievements. I've never played on the Xbox. I only played on PC. I didn't realize that that was a thing. Yeah, but it, I think it's a pretty recent thing on, on, on oh, Xbox the... One. They, that, the, the original Xbox didn't tell you, and the original Xbox 360 yeah. didn't tell you. Uh, but yeah, the, the Xbox One, they've been doing it. I think they might have actually crypt that from Sony? I'm not sure. Anyway, but they... Uh, it, it, is, it is interesting to... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Any, anything about the like, collection of broad statistics is always way more interesting to me than it should be, possibly. So I'm, I'm just supposed to be mowing down zombies. So Han points out that you won't actually die in the car with bloater gas. So, uh, so what is it that we're actually doing today? What are, you, are you doing a challenge? So the, the official challenge this month is we're supposed to be killing zombies with our cars. Unfortunately, uh, I've already got that challenge. So, we, oh. uh, so did you have it? If you don't have it, then we should maybe switch over to your I've profile. I've got all the challenges. Okay, well then, um, well we're not going to try to sign in with your profile because I don't think even know if you have one. <laughs> uh, on Xbox? On Xbox, so you're uh, more of a PC guy? Yeah, I played it on Steam. That's all I have. Uh, yeah, so, and by the way, so uh, we, we should point out there are a lot of hardcore serious PC players on our team. Um, and, and so there's, you know, whenever, you've got, whenever you're a, de a devotee of a particular platform, you, it's always comforting to know that you've got, you know, you've got folks on a game team. you got some backup. <laughs> exactly, who feel the way you do. We're watching your interests. 
Uh, Cerebral Amisa says, hey, heads up, something from Anonymous Santa is heading your way soon. It, uh, Cerebral, you have to stop doing that. So, wait, are you saying that Brant and I are going to be having sword fights in the office? Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> the last time Cerebral Lamisa sent Brant an enormous, like, long sword or something with, like, skulls on it and yeah. stuff. And, uh, like, wow. seriously, we are not soliciting... <laughs> The, I mean, it's, it's it's incredibly sweet of you, sword Cerebral. That's, like, yeah, the sword that's sitting in the, oh, in the other room. That, that was from Cerebral. Yeah, that was from Cerebral. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, above and beyond. Yeah. We, we, Definitely uh, above and beyond anything we would ever ask we for. Do, we do, we do. I do have to say officially, please, guys, don't send us stuff here. I mean, while we love you and appreciate it, there's there's problems like associated with getting gifts. But uh, I mean. You know, cash is always great. <laughs> <laughs> Under the table for gross. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Cerebral, thank you again. I want to thank you publicly for sending us that amazing broadsword of doom. That's amazing. Um, and if I can, I'm going to try and put it in the game. So uh, Blade Runner uh, 07 asks, will State of Decay 2 retain the atmosphere of the first game? I'm looking forward to more small towns to explore and loot. Um, and, and actually, uh, somebody else, oh, who was it? I lost it here. Somebody else was saying they were excited about the map news today. So, for those of you who missed it, um, Sonia posted a, a made a post today uh, announcing uh, a few more details about the maps of State of Decay 2. The fact that, uh, unlike the original game, we're actually going to have three distinct maps. Um, oh, we're and, saying that now? Yeah, we're saying that now, officially. <laughs> yeah. Each of them about approximately the size of the original game. And so you don't, so, and one of the main reasons we did that was because, I mean, you guys remember when, when we uh, first released Breakdown. <laughs> that was interesting. That was uh, awesome. <laughs> When we first released Breakdown, it was kind of interesting to try to explain what was going on when you get in that RV and you drive out of town, and then like the Twilight Zone, you arrive in the same town again, uh, out of nowhere. We, we wanted to maintain the longevity of Breakdown, the fact that you can keep playing this game for a really long time, continuously, you know, building up the same community, but we didn't want to have that weird Twilight Zone experience of leaving one town and coming right back to the same one. So we got three maps uh, in the new game, and uh, you know, and, and the hope is that you know, over time, maybe we can even increase that. But we'll have to, no promises. Oh no specific <laughs> promises on that. Now that we've said it, we, that means we absolutely have well, to ship three games. Sonya three games. already hinted at it, so you know, so it's her fault if it uh, if anyone has a problem with it. Uh, Sorry, environment artists. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so but uh, but the original question was, um, are we going to maintain the atmosphere of the original game? I'd say definitely, yes. That is a huge priority that we have. This sort of like the the, the rural small town atmosphere of State of Decay is definitely uh, something that we've we've tried really hard to to, to carry forward and maintain uh, in the sequel. So man, chat there's fast. There's practical reasons yeah. for that too. Um, yeah. The, the more space between the houses, the better. The, more, the, the more space there. between the houses, the better. That there's, it's simple, like, I don't know what, what scientific. It's like electronics or physics or something that <laughs> says we can't fit, or the Xbox can't load, you know. Oh, just in terms of the density of just, objects. Yeah, density of yeah. objects, stuff like that. There's definitely. But I mean, it totally there. fits with the philosophy that we started with. We never, we didn't design the original game with the limitations in mind. It was we wanted this feel, so it just worked out better for us that um, distance between buildings is is larger. Ugh. So, uh, uh, Kate Knoxman says that uh, the atomic bomb achievement in Lifeline is still under 5%, too. They're, they're all calling out achievements they've got uh, in, in State of Decay that very, very few other people have got. The, the atomic bomb's a tough one. You have to, you have to win all the Sasquatch missions, um, you know, and, and <laughs> to, to even make that ending happen. Oh, uh, is Big Ed still in here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't see him speaking right now. That doesn't mean he's not here, though. Big Ed, if you're still on, um, I will publicly apologize that you found a bug we didn't. Um, and, you know, uh, all I can say is that in a, in a non-linear sandbox game, setting up fail conditions to try and bug test those things <laughs> is almost impossible because we never know all the... the uh, the things that are involved in, you know, it may be because you had 11,000 rounds of ammunition, or, I mean, I feel really bad because Big Ed worked for months to set up his run on the leaderboard, and then uh, a bug of ours 
sort of Perfect. killed it. Oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah oh. like killed his game. And so, I mean, seriously, months, oh, hundreds and hundreds of hours. Oh, no. um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, of course we don't ship with the knowledge of stuff like that, but uh, setting up, uh, finding every condition where a bug's going to happen in a game like this, almost impossible. So I apologize from the bottom of my, uh, uh, you know, pit that was a heart. <laughs> so uh, Sonya is making a lot of hopefully jokes about us being fired for talking uh, about State of Decay 2. Um, Wait, I don't have to work here anymore? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. see you later, Brant. All right, anyway. Um, you won't be able to control it. It's not. Right. Oh, I can't. It's, you're right. It's but, freedom control. So uh, Han, Han reacted to what I was saying about, uh, you know, um, bouncing from map to map, the idea, you know, saying that, oh, Breakdown is confirmed for State of Decay 2. I was not confirming Breakdown for State of Decay 2. Nope. I was saying that we have we have learned a lot of lessons from Breakdown. Basically, you know, we're doing a sequel to uh, essentially what was already kind of a trilogy of games. We had the original State of Decay, Breakdown, and Lifeline, and we're sequelizing kind of all three of those together. And so uh, we basically, we've taken a lot of what we've learned from each of those games, and we're bringing it forward in unspecified ways uh, to, to, to make the sequel better. And so that, that, that was just a particular lesson we learned from Breakdown, was that it's weird to just go from one map to the same map. That's kind of odd. It makes the world feel a little bit, even if the map itself is large, it makes the world feel kind of small. Um, and so what we're going for is to have, you know, by, having, by splitting the game up into multiple large maps, uh, we can we can basically create a sense that the world is even bigger than that. You know, that if you if you can if you can you know have one experience in one place and another experience in another place, it makes the entire world feel like it, it, there's just there's more variety and texture to it. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Do you think that's safe to walk over there and touch? I think it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it in movies. They do. Yeah. Well, make, make make sure that you lick it first to make sure that it's safe. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna lick it. I'm gonna lick it. I'm gonna. What? I feel compelled. I'm a little hungry. Oh no! <laughs> Fooled by Didn't video see games. That Darn it. <laughs> I love that he turns into a landmine. Love that. I don't think I've ever I was, seen that before. I was trying to show you uh, the best decal in the whole game Elvis Parsley. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Elvis Parsley. <laughs> That was James McMillan. Uh, I know. And, and that I, reeks uh, of James. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I broke his heart uh, by saying, look, it's Elvis Broccoli. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he went, burst. I'll oh, forget it. <laughs> Blade Runner, we're not re revealing the seasons of the, uh, of the new game, unfortunately. Uh, team uh, DA Tracks uh, says that, or I'm probably saying that name wrong, uh, but... Uh, Says uh, says that basically people care, care, don't care that much about the storyline. They want to know. So I'm curious if you don't feel like uh, that folks care much about the storyline of State of Decay. Uh, what what is it? What what aspects of the game are you looking forward to to, to seeing? Hopefully in the sequel. I'm cur I'm curious to get some feedback on that. Um, and also, if anybody has any questions for this guy, any questions about programming, <laughs> any questions about how you get in the Who industry, doesn't love how, programming how do you talk? become uh, uh, like a uh, whatever? What, I'm trying to think of a really uh, fancy way to compliment coders, and now I can't. Uh, There's no way. There's no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to say code ninja, something like that. How do you become a badass code ninja like Eric Anderson? Uh, uh, Vinewood liked our. In, in case you've forgotten his name, his name is Eric Anderson, by the way. <laughs> Vinewood liked your achievement while we're playing. Love it. <laughs> nice. Let's see here. Going my way? That's what I say when I'm driving with a <laughs> sign in front of me. Let's get it in the back. Come on. Let's put it in back. Put it in back. Nope. Darn it. <laughs> Dan31 so, was about to curse, then he realized that an English class was watching, and so he decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, we are. Class? We are. Yeah. Oh, did we not tell did, oh, you? I came in after that. This. Yeah. No. One, one of one of the folks in here, Sabatha. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're on anymore because their English class might have ended. But they put this on in their English class, and everybody was watching. <laughs> so we had way That's more viewers than our time viewing for English it. class. Yeah. Well, they're learning about <laughs> about art and, and literature. This is literature. And the poor state of education. <laughs> in my my education, not yours. So this question, what yeah. programming languages do I know and how many years of experience do I have in each? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of the one that's the It's most probably important. been like, uh, C++ is my main language, and that's, I guess, since high school. What is that, 15 years now or something like that? Um, 
C++ and C, uh, action script. Uh, unfortunately, I come from a casual game background, uh, and uh, Flash was an inevitable part of that. Um, and some Java and JavaScript, uh, Python, and Lua. Most of those by necessity, not by choice. <laughs> C++ is the only one I chose because I knew that was a big part of the game industry. Uh, and the rest just were parts of the job that I kind of learned on the fly. Um, you know, very scripting languages and stuff like that that we were using at the time. I always appreciate whenever a programmer learn, you know, gets into a scripting language and, and uses it so that I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times... Especially like, if you write a tool in it. A lot of times the tool. it's like a designer comes to you and they're like, why isn't this working? And then you just inherit their script and you're like, oh god. I, <laughs> I don't know, because I can't... <laughs> Yeah, I've so. managed to get this far in my career as a designer, doing a lot of scripting without ever learning the syntax of any particular scripting language. It's just always some visual tool or some like tree that I'm building or some table I'm filling out. It's just, you know, it's funny how far you can actually get away, like get by without actually knowing what you're doing <laughs> just by looking at previous wow. examples. Wow. <laughs> like obviously, I, I like, didn't take it that way. The, the <laughs> amount of confidence you just inspired. <laughs> Well, I mean, I remember like uh, like uh, doing like modding for like Oblivion and stuff like that, not understanding their scripting language, just opening up previous like the scripts yeah. that they already have. And, and just like, oh, finding I, the one thing that you, you, you want to You can figure out enough of like what's going on just looking at their stuff and you know make stuff work. So uh, team D uh, team DA tracks uh, says that, that that what they're looking for is, is just a lot of a lot of randomness, a lot of you know just fun things to do with their friends, sort of pop popping up continuously, uh, which sounds that's uh, that's kind of that's a lot of how I play uh, State of Decay, uh, you know, as well. This is kind of um, you know I, I get into it less for the storyline and more for just kind of the the atmosphere, the experience of. of Building this base and do it, you know, and 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 sort of, get, you know, getting into what these characters are trying to trying to live through, and it's and it's more about that moment to moment. So hopefully, um, when 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 we can say more about State of the Gate, hopefully it's up your alley because uh, we a lot of us, you know, kind of uh, have the same sort of focus when we're playing. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way I played State of Decay. I I never finished the storyline in the State of Decay because yeah. I got maybe four or five missions in and then just stopped and then played just the systems and I probably have, according to Steam, a hundred hours. <laughs> I've not probably made it ten percent of the way through the story. That's and that's there are a lot of people who pay the way. It was it was actually one of the ways that uh, things that, that inspired Breakdown was watching a lot of players do exactly that. Like some of them would get all the way up to the end of the story and they would know they were on the last mission. They were like I'm not touching the last mission. Yeah. I want to stay here. Dude, I haven't finished an open world game in like 10 years because that's I, I can't, I don't want it to end. So I yeah. always get, when I have a hint that I'm getting close, I'm like, nope, done with doing those quests. And now it's just BSing around in the world. Uh, like, that's the way I play. I like systems. I like the mechanics coming together. Yeah. And just exploring the world and that, and that stuff. Yeah, I tend to like sort of methodically crawl through a game and get all of the side content that I possibly can before yes. progressing the, the, the main storyline. And, I mean, if, if, yeah, yeah, because what I love about games is telling your own stories. It's not necessarily yeah. being told my like a story. It's like that's what games have that other mediums don't have. Is that yeah. I'm participating in the story, and you, so you get to step into one of the roles and improvise, whereas instead of just sitting back and seeing what somebody else is going to do. Yeah, because like when I talk about like games with friends, it's not like oh, you know, this point in Mass Effect, it's really cool when they do that and that and that. It's like no, it's like oh, I was doing this thing, and then this dragon came by, and then this <laughs> this villager decided to try to fight the dragon, and you know, it's yeah. all the crazy random stuff that happened that is unique to your experience and no one else's. Like yeah. that's the stuff that you talk about with your friends. Yeah, I call yeah, those, we call those like uh, water cooler stories. Yes. Right? It's like yes. you got you got the authored story that somebody wrote, and then you've got the water cooler stories that arise out of the systems and your choices and the you know the the way that the world works and, well, and, and yeah. it's so the zombie genre is so perfect for that because everyone thinks about that it's part of our yes. it's part of you know culture now right and I think that's what State of Decay really nailed for me too is with the, all the base building stuff because it does like what would you do that whole scenario it yeah. lets you live that out uh, and I think that's why it was really unique to me um, 
Yeah, I love it. So having just the open, like not just the open world stuff and all the like simulation, all that stuff, and then also all the base building, the community management stuff, like all that stuff together is like what makes a zombie apocalypse scenario so interesting. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So. So that is, you know, that's the way we're thinking about this as we go, as we go into State of Decay 2. And we're hoping that we'll be able to, in a couple of months, uh, talk to you about a lot more specifics. We can actually get into how that experience uh, that Eric and Brant and I all had, you know, playing and, and Brant's case developing the original uh, State of Decay. How, you know, how that played out into, you know, coming up with how the sequel works. Can we talk about that there? Well, let's see here. I, I think we've talked, no, that one. I think we've talked about, we've verified. Oh, yeah. We can clarify that. Yeah, so so ne uh, Neo Onyx uh, asks, why didn't you guys go full MMO instead of co-op mode? Uh, and that was it was actually part of so originally when this game was first announced, um, it was announced in conjunction with the the ambition to make an MMO eventually. Um, and this was you know this company was started by a lot of uh, 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 among others a lot of uh, ArenaNet um, alums, uh, people who had a lot of MMO experience. And, and the idea was, first we'll make a single-player game, then we'll make an MMO. But making the single-player game took years. Um, and then uh, as that, you know, and then as the game came out, it developed kind of its own fan base. And between time passing and the industry changing, and also just looking at how people were actually playing the original State of Decay, we realized that 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 audience wasn't really looking for a classic MMO anymore. They weren't looking for World of Warcraft with zombies. You know, they were looking for a game that was very much like this single player game, State of Decay. They just wanted to play it with other people. Um, and so we realized that actually probably uh, you know, one of the best things that we could do is, you know, rather than trying to stick to the original plan, because you know, the zombie apocalypse will teach you, your original plan is crap. Your original plan <laughs> is never going to work out the way you think it's going to. Yep. Uh, so instead of trying to stick to the original plan, we went full zombie apocalypse style on this problem and, and realized that, that what we needed to do was make what people were actually asking us for. Um, which well, and was, like yeah. a... And MMO puts a lot of limitations also on what you can do in terms of the action. Like, just tech-wise, like, it's just such a complicated mess. Like, the bandwidth limitations yeah. means that, like, I've worked on similar titles before, and, like, just the network networking requirements make you make all sorts of sacrifices that kind of hurt the action in a way. And it's, it's really hard to actually make it feel good. Um, and the way State of K had that visceral kind of action experience along with all the tactical stuff. Um, like, you do have to sacrifice some of that stuff to do it in an MMO. Just That's true. At yeah. that well, kind of scale, it's it's impossible to, like, really get that same experience. Yeah, as the moment-to-moment -moment combat and navigation of, of, of State of K2 started to come together, that was it was during that time that we were making the decision about what kind of network model we were going to have. And one of the things, yeah, that we had, like you said, that we had to really keep in mind was the fact that the, you know, the more MMO-y this game got, the more locked down and limited, uh, you know, the, the, yeah. the combat was going to be, and making this combat feel great, making it feel like State of Decay, is such a huge like priority for us. It's I mean, hard it's to make that kind of sacrifice. What I loved in State of Decay is that pressure of like, oh, things have gone way bad, and I have to adapt really quickly. And in an MMO, you kind of lose some of that control. It's not as much up to like your actions and your reactions and your your. Uh, ability to adapt on the fly it's more like oh did my command get through and waiting for all these cute commands to to go through and all the, the crap that goes along with that and also one one great thing about doing a game that it that doesn't depend on uh you know on being like hosted by a massive bank of servers someplace is the fact that this game can have a lot more longevity you know when you when you buy a game that is not a server hosted mmo experience you don't have to worry so much about the question of well is it going to get sunsetted if not enough people play this is it just going to go away and evaporate into oh, the ether yeah. And this thing that I that I love is just gone forever. You know, if, if the game if the game is, is 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 smaller scale on the multiplayer side, that means you can be a lot more certain that, that the, the thing you're buying can stay with you for as long as you want. Actually, that's something. It's uh, yesterday at lunch we were talking with a bunch of people and just talking about past projects and how so many people their projects are no longer playable because they're online only games and they got shut down. And yeah. then now it's like, oh, I can't show my work anymore. Yeah, you know, exactly. All that, that's right? all gone. I can't go back and play it. I thought it was really cool, but it's gone now. 
So uh, Team DA Tracks has been bringing up some some ideas for you know how it would be interesting to uh, have more complex outposts, uh, outposts you have to defend, things like that. A lot, of, and you bring up a lot of ideas that are very similar to to, to conversations that I remember having uh, around here. Um, not not necessarily. Uh, I, I can't promise you everything that you're that you're asking for, but I can say that, that we, we we found the same kinds of ideas compelling, and, and I hope that uh, hope you like at least a few of the innovations that we've uh, that we've we've put into the new system. But I can't say any more than that. Uh, somebody had another question up here too. Oh, Cerebral Lemises wants to know if we've done a, a mental what if scenario about like uh, how how folks here at the company would survive a zombie apocalypse. Um, Every it, single day. I think that, <laughs> yes. the fact that it's we're you know uh, we're in an office building is actually is is kind of helpful because uh, at least we're not you know on the ground floor where we're just going to immediately get swept under by the hordes. I've already rigged the stairs to blow. By the way. <laughs> So stay away from the <laughs> stairs if a zombie walks around. Just subtle suggestion. All right, appreciate it. Sounds good. So Dan wonders um, when the guys bring on new people introduced. Do you send a, a don't send don't say this email out? Uh, we know we give you no preparation at all. No, no, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, but most not of the, my fault. Yeah, <laughs> whatever of, I say. And, and and most of the folks at Undead Labs though have been, um, you know, they've worked they've worked in the industry for quite some time and and have learned sort of you know how little basically you err on the side of saying nothing and only say things that you that you know somebody else has already yeah. cleared. Yeah, that's a lot of the stuff I'm reading. I'm like, oh, I know that. I'm like, I'm not. I'm gonna let Jeff read. <laughs> Go ahead and be the one who who gets in trouble for that. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh, Oh, and, and, and Sonia is pointing out that we also, you know, we try to only talk about our own expertises, uh, you know, like, like not trying to, like, you know, I'll say things like, yeah, that was, you know, it was a priority for us to try to maintain the same kind of, you know, uh, small town atmosphere. <laughs> But that's about as far as I'll go into arts ter into arts territory. You know, we need to get you know get Doug or James in here sometime if we want to get into a real in depth discussion about you know the art considerations. That because because you know we don't have any artists in this room who could talk about it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Real no. Uh, I'm sitting right here. Oh, when did you? Hey. Oh, hello, hey, Brett. Oh, oh hi. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see you there. <laughs> Jerks. Uh, <laughs> I th well, you know, I think Brand is pri uh, Brand primarily as a desk builder and then secondarily as an artist. So, yeah. And the desks are mostly made now. So yeah. my desk is so rickety. Actually, I'm just wondering why you're even here, even still here. Well, that was carefully planned, <laughs> and it quite hasn't done its job yet. Yeah, yeah. my kneecaps are still in, in, a full in intact. A full collapse has not quite happened. So. See, anytime someone comes over to talk to me, they, they 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 instinctively lean on my desk, and the desk like wobbles like oh. six inches that direction, and it, like nearly my entire <laughs> setup really collapses on me. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, every time like I kind of move something, and I hear that little crack sound in the leg, I'm like. Oh, yeah. Don't touch the thing. <laughs> That's a lot of money I'm about a, to go listen, down. I am not. I didn't hear anything you guys just said. <laughs> I'm not listening at all. I'm going to go visit Undead Labs. <laughs> or no, this isn't Undead Labs. This is empty. No, it's, DA, this team, is Undead Labs. Team DA Tracks has got is, is making more suggestions about you know uh, uh, outposts. Uh, you know, you know, all the different ways that you could potentially use an outpost. Using it to detect zombie attacks, or uh, you know, there, there's it's 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 a man. That's an interesting line of discussion. I wish I could get into more detail about just because we've had we've had so many talks about you know what, what outposts are for and things like that around here and and you know eventually at the end of the game at the end of the day uh, you know you you you've got all of these millions of ideas of things you could do. You end up having to nail it down to just a couple, you know, just take a few steps forward, um, and and you know, and see how that feels. But uh, but yeah, I, I definitely hear you, and definitely you know, I'm as excited about uh, advancing these systems as, as as you are. So oh, everybody. Yeah. yeah, no game survives contact with production. So uh, Undead Sonia yeah, is, is doing a quiz with folks, asking, uh, if you could work at the lab, would you work in design, art, programming, or community? And I will tell Kevin that she did not mention audio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious nobody would want to work with Kevin. <laughs> oh, I left a little too hard at that. Um, so, <laughs> just kidding. Kevin is very sweet to let us use his audio room uh, for these Twitch streams, despite the fact that we basically, I come in and I just fill it with a bunch of my own equipment. Well, this, and, this uh, was supposed to be my disco dance floor. 
Yeah, no, we, at one point we talked about making it uh, a motion capture studio and stuff like that, but audio, really, you know, that's, they're the ones who kind of need their own space more than anybody else does. We can do motion capture out wow. on the street. You the, know. All of a sudden there's like 85 hordes around here. You got <laughs> this. You're fine. Sort of. Oh, did that? Oh. Yeah, put them out of their misery. Nice. Whoa. Oh, oh, whoa! Ambush. Who's that guy? Oh, <laughs> man. He's, is he wearing one of our shirts? Uh, yeah, because I just came out of oh, Undead no. Labs. Uh, <laughs> somebody's shooting them for me. Oh, I've got somebody up in the tower. Nice! Oh. Yes! Oh, you're near your home base. Nice. Kinox oh, no. <laughs> says that uh, they'd be in community, but they... Uh, uh, they, they'd want to join the community team, but they'd probably get fired because they'd steal all the merch. Uh, you don't have to steal our merch. <laughs> no, it's I've got an entire drawer full of <laughs> yeah. our merch. We, we, we needed to make room for, for, for new incoming merch since, you know, we've got a new game coming it's out. It's just an open room. And so, They're yeah. trying to get rid of it. <laughs> yes, there's, there's, there is so much. So much. I was so happy about... Um, Uh-oh. I was so happy about getting support from my watchtower. And then they shot my tire out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Han just pointed out the same thing. He's like, yeah, your own watchtower just shot your wheel out. <laughs> yeah. They know you like a challenge. <laughs> it looks like Vanilla State just won uh, uh, Undead Sanya's little sweepstakes. So that's awesome. Let's see here. I guess I needed that aspirin because I'm terrible. Oh, there it is. The most favorite pastime of the apocalypse. Oh, hey, uh, Steinekin's pointing out that, that, uh, that at State of Decay on Twitter, which uh, I believe he runs, uh, does merch contests and stuff like that. So definitely follow at State of Decay on Twitter if you want to get free stuff yes. from the big giant pile. Josh is very active. We're happy to have him on board. Plus, so, uh, I, was, I was getting so, like, fed up with Sonya and Nicole. Uh, Han points out that that, uh, that shot to the wheel is why you never give your people grenade launchers. Uh. <laughs> yeah, all of your carefully, uh, your carefully uh, crafted car collection can go up in one, in one fell swoop. <laughs> Just boom. Though, uh, in Lifeline, during a uh, siege, sometimes you do want to give them grenade launchers because they never run out of ammo. So they just, oh, like, really? right. blast everything. They lay waste to everything. You know, I don't think I've ever used a grenade launcher in this game. Well, just because, so precious, right? And that was the thing. Like, I was playing the, the main campaign, and for me, yeah, it was all those, like, really nice weapons. I'm like, those are too precious. you got to save those for what's really important. Yeah. But I'm the kind of player that no situation is then important enough to ever <laughs> use it. I, I am a hoarder, similar like, to... Yeah, I, I think we, we did add at one point um, the ability to craft ammunition at a workshop, which would make it a little bit nicer because even though it still costs something, it's not like these are the only three it's renewable. Yeah. grenades left in the world. I'm never you. There is never. There is no horde that is so important. That would make a big difference for me. Yeah, no, it's it's a problem. So I've never actually seen. I hadn't seen the grenade launcher or any of that stuff until now. Wow. So this is, <laughs> yeah. I'm just that kind of player. I can't. I can't do it. So Blade Runner, we're glad to have you here. Blade Runner just pointed out that they had today off and that they're happy that they got to make got to make the stream today. We're happy to have you here too. We uh, we really kind of uh, you know Brant and I especially kind of depend on, on on seeing you guys every month, getting the feedback that, that you guys give us. It keeps us I even keeps us going pretty hard. I even resorted to a little bit of uh, guilt tripping because I've been trying to uh, you know like I told um, uh, Peace of Pisces that she should quit work. And just yeah, yes, I saw that. <laughs> Did I kill that guy? Oh, that guy died in, in an effort not to die. I love <laughs> it. I mean, no, that's terrible. I mean, it's good and terrible. Oh, Captain C. Baker's here. What? He says, ta-da. The captain? Yep. He should be a major by now. <laughs> nah. These oh, are the jokes, wouldn't, kids. Wouldn't that, man, wouldn't that suck if you had to change your entire online identity every time you got promoted? <laughs> that would just be, oh, that'd be the worst. Captain Baker, hello. One of our first intrepid fans. Oh, wow. He's, uh, he's VIP. Yeah. Like way back in the, in the, um, the, the first fan site that went up, Eight minutes after Jeff 
uh, <laughs> announced the studio. Wow, that's hardcore. And it was <laughs> nice. Yeah. Glad to have you here. He and Dantron have been around, and I mean, I don't, I don't see Futter much on on the forums anymore. But um, there's Futter, and then we've got um, Abhorred Deities is still around. We still see some of the old crew once in a while. Like to, like to, uh, to see the, some old friends show up. Of course, most of you guys are old friends by now. We need to make a new game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kay Knoxman says thank you for the uh, the water bottle that we that that we sent them. Uh, uh, I think a month ago, a signed water bottle. And so yeah, so now now and then, uh, you know, we get we had announcements like, uh, yeah. there's a thing to sign in the lobby. Yeah, Everyone go sign cool. it. Nice. It's cool to see the person who actually got it. That's yeah. Really cool. Yeah, yeah I, I awesome. only drank out of that a little bit too. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah we, yeah we left we left it sitting on top of the urinal and everybody went in and uh, and signed it. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> that wouldn't be. Fair. I didn't go that there. Wouldn't be, that wouldn't be fair. That, that was fair. that was a one hundred percent Jeffrey. <laughs> see here. Well, thank you, Blade Runner. That's really nice of you. Blade, Blade Runner is is, is complimenting our, uh, our our community interaction. Thing that we uh, you know, just. Oh. Uh, offering appreciation for, uh, for, for you know, communicating with fans of the game. Well, this, I mean, here, I don't, is that, who is this, Blade Runner? Uh, yeah. So, Blade, this is, uh, this is a lot less than we used to, so it's, st it's us still getting used to not being able to talk about what we're currently working on, but, uh, man, it's, uh, it's interaction with you guys that makes this every single day come in and, and, make it lots of fun right yeah. so I, I i absolutely love uh streaming days because we get a reconnect and um i even i even got so lonely uh for the fans that i streamed for the first time uh in uh, at home in a long time uh this sunday it was a lot of fun yeah, I've been uh, I've been slacking off in my personal streams lately just because there is so much work to do right now. Like, this is it the is. you know getting oh, right God. towards the end of the project, and it's like you know uh, things yeah. ramp up pretty hard. I still it's hard to justify the extra stuff. I still put <laughs> yeah. in eighty hours last week, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I did. I did. I did one of those uh, sixty plus hour hour weeks uh, pretty recently. It's like, you know, I, basically, I've got, I've got time to uh, to work, go home, help take care of my kids, go back to work. And that's, uh, you know, it's funny. That's why I'm really thankful for the uh, the switch right now because carpools are the only time I actually have a chance to do anything. But, like, work <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like commute I, I, time is actually precious now. <laughs> I've been trying to uh, to play Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like in that game needs time. You need to sit down with. Oh it yeah. And really play it and uh, and so like I'll get like one day a week where I get to actually sit down and enjoy right, the game. what's with all these open world games coming out now it's I know seriously <laughs> I've got yeah I've got no time to devote to them and you know and uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I love this kind of game you know but, my car is already messed up so I'm gonna go for the job got it Get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, uh, no. Big Ed has made a request for female juggernauts in State of the K2. Uh, we will have to um, say no comment to that. And uh, let's see. Hey, <laughs> Big Ed, you need to send Nicole that email we talked about. That's it. Cryptic. <laughs> All right. Super That's cryptic. It. Big Ed needs to actually use his email. Oh, not a good time to get pulled out of my car. <laughs> yeah, not a good time to get pulled no, out. No, I don't know. That particular car, <laughs> I was, was, was super eager to stay I, in there. Yeah, yeah. Not a great time here. That was just advice, really. They were suggesting to thankfully, move on. Thankfully, the jug wasn't really paying much attention. He's got better things to do. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, you know, getting juggy with it, I don't know. Getting juggy with it. <laughs> leave. <laughs> yeah, S crickets. Let's just leave that. Let's leave that one there too. Sonya's leaving. Bye, Sonya. Now we can say anything. Yeah, well, she, she said, guys, don't don't let the guys get fired. <laughs> so don't, don't ask us any questions. So you can't answer. everything you ever wanted to know about State of Decay Two, <laughs> the deuce. Mm -hmm. Boom. Whoa. Do we have any more questions uh, for or about Eric? Because uh, for those of you who joined us late, this is, no uh, is Eric Anderson. 
who is sitting next to me. Uh, he is a programmer on State of Decay uh, 2, and he joined us uh, just a little less than a year ago. Yeah. And uh, so he, we just barely got him in the queue to come up here on our stream yeah. and talk to you guys. Uh, so any, you know, any questions you have about him? Unfortunately, we can't tell you exactly what he's working on yet because we haven't announced any details about that subject. Yeah. So, so ask anything, and I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, please ask him some non-questions. He will give you some non-answers, uh. um, and it'll be great. I promise you guys soon. Uh, <laughs> we'll, you, you, guys, <laughs> you guys will be tired of us talking about what we've been working on. Yeah. So, oh, uh, wait, uh, Yelkun, are you asking us to say hello to Spain? Because if so, hello Spain. We like Spain. Hola. Hi, Spain. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry. Hola. Hola Spain. Sal uh, saludos, I believe, was what he said. Blade Runner, my middle name is Christopher. <laughs> there you go. There you go, I can answer that. One <laughs> thing I do know. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been, yeah. Oh, man, I want to talk about what I'm working on, too. Talking about little name and stuff. But so, think. what's my favorite part of State of Decay? Hmm. Um, honestly. Playing it or working on it? Or you can answer both, I guess. Actually, yeah, what is, is it? Well, I'm going to go with playing for now. Yeah. Um, working on it is probably dangerous anyway. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, um, I think permadeath is a huge part <laughs> of what makes State of Decay so unique for me. Um, so when I first played it, like when knowing that the characters die forever completely changed how tense the game was. Like when you have a, like two zombies coming at you and you're like, okay, this is kind of bad. And then you get that third zombie, you're like, but in most games I'd be like, oh, well, let's see what happens. And let's go <laughs> yeah. for it. Like, sure, I'll, I'm, a, I'm a juggernaut. I can take on anything. Yeah. Um, with this, knowing that the guy's gone forever when he dies, I'm like, nope, nope, I, like you have to make that hard call. You're like, I... I'm not gonna risk my Marcus for these three, <laughs> like yeah, they're three people, but they're three noobs that I don't know anything about. I'm not risking Marcus for them. <laughs> and then you just watch them get mauled to death and you're like, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. <laughs> But Marcus, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come exactly. on. <laughs> uh, they're asking what your favorite movie is and insinuating that you might have already advertised it on your shirt. It's, <laughs> well, what are you wearing? See, that's, it's might, might. See, uh, I don't really see it that way. I have a lot of different movies that serve different purposes. Like, it yeah. serves a very specific purpose. Is this one of your favorites? Oh, I just did it the Han movie. It is one of my move. favorite, like, kind of action-adventure movies. I think it was uh, Jurassic Park with Steven Spielberg at his peak. I just did the Han pro move. Oh, what? Watch this. So, he thinks, he sees me, right? It's like, oh, you're not being sneaky. But then I can go... Bam! I can do the I can do the what? stealth kill from the front. What was that? How did as, long, as, long, as, long, as long as someone's back is turned, it works. Look at this sweet ride. Thank you, by QA. What happened there? <laughs> Look at this sweet ride. <laughs> so, uh, Cot Jockey asked if I snuck the names of every member of my family in the state of K2, just like I did with Break Breakdown. Um, I was kind of embarrassed by that actually after that <laughs> because because I just I sort of did it on a whim. I was like I got to come up with some names for these characters. And, uh, I've got family members, blah, 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 you know. Um, but no, so I actually sent a um, uh, a message around the studio asking everyone to contribute the names of all of their family members uh, at the studio. So I did not just fill it with my own family members. Uh, I've, I've I've been I frequently at different times across the project been asking for name submissions for everybody. So you're gonna see. Uh, Character names throughout this game are going to come from lots of different sources, not just my own family members. Um, and there was, let's see, I think there might have been one more question. I really need to shoot out this last tire because this is... <laughs> uh, so Luke has asked an easy question of you. Uh, how many maps are going to be extended <laughs> to game two? And actually, that, that is an easy question because Sonya already did announce it. Eleven. Yes. Not what? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's three. I heard it's three. Yes, it's three. <laughs> so three maps in State of Decay 2, uh, each of them approximately the same size as, uh, as the original game's map. And uh, that's about as much as we can say. I tried to say a little bit more, and Sonya got freaked out at me. So, uh, so I'm, no, no justifications, no explanations. It's a big number three. And we just lost our jobs. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'd probably get fired soon anyways. It's fine. <laughs> so, so Han, uh, Zeka is not my dentist. She's just a dentist that I met one day. Uh, this, this, this is different. So I, I found this really unusual name, Zeka, that I put uh, on one of the characters. Uh -huh. And it was just because it was this random woman that I met one day who was just 
some I, she's some dentist and her name is Zeka and I thought it was a really cool name and it started with a Z and there's not a lot of Z names in the world so it just stuck in my head and so I just I used it for for like Dungeons and Dragons characters and stuff like that, <laughs> well, whatever yeah, and I know. Uh, I know how that goes yeah exactly and so yeah. and so I threw it on one of the characters in in, in Breakdown uh, and so yeah so I never like I seriously had one conversation with this woman never saw her. I don't even remember what she looks like or anything never saw her again she just had a really cool name and that, you know, and you do that like you know when you're when you're working in like a creative industry or something you're kind of doing that you always have this like dragnet out into your life trying to find interesting stuff interesting names interesting ideas see now we have to have a contest to see who can get the first Z character that is a dentist. I don't, know if we, I don't know if we have dentist stuff, I, but that's that's definitely got to be a contest. I th yeah. <laughs> Man, no, somebody's just going to edit their save file. That's all, that's Actually, all that's, that's kind of a lot of what I'm looking forward to is those combinations of things that make those like perfect characters that you're like, oh. Yeah. So, we can't say any more yeah. about character generation. Nice. We should not say any yep. more about character Stop. generation. Oh, uh, let's see here. We might not answer that. Um, think of it. <laughs> so talk, let's see here. I'm sorry, just, just reading you guys' comments. What time is it? Because I've got... Uh, see, I've got... Uh, we have about ten more minutes, okay. I think, before, before we're done. And uh, Han is, is, is referring to your, um, to your truck as a Ghost Rider truck. It's, uh, it's a sweet ride. Someone posted on um, on Xbox the other day. They had a random character named Gene Poole. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's awesome. R That's random why name we generators. Do what we do. <laughs> random name generators are amazing. They're my favorite. One of my favorite things about any video game. I sort of don't let anyone else touch them because I want to do all of the random name generator touching myself. Wait, no. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Brent's just staring off. Do we space. have HR? Do I, th I think uh, we, no, we, we, got, we, we don't have, Sonya H the LP. We don't have HR now she's as gone. a conscious choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it would be the largest. What happens when everyone's fired? It would like, be the <laughs> biggest department we have. Uh, so Takura Spirit asks, hey, will this kind of long, annoying survey mission type mission be in State of Decay 2? Uh, no comment. Uh, but I think I think you'll be happier with the way thing with, with, with the sequel than you were with the original game. Takuro, I I can't believe you said that. Is this a survey mission right now? You're just doing this because you, you just, like it. Yeah, I don't think this is a I don't think this is a mission. This is the part in zombie movies that I love the most too. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah there, there there was there's surveying just because you want to, and then there's survey missions where you have to get through this entire thing and the objective isn't satisfied until you've seen every single question mark and turned them all into pretty icons. Um, and we recognize the downsides of that experience. Uh, I'll just say that much. This represented a really important part of the survival thing, though, right? It's knowing your, your surroundings, getting yeah. familiar with your surroundings. And while the practice of this particular sort of mini mission was not the most favorite thing that everybody had to do in the game, it served a very important purpose. Well, the thing is, I actually get a lot of positive comments from people about the process of serving, like like going to the top of a building and like just looking around and seeing what's there. That that experience is good. The, the, the only part of it that people I've, I've heard complains about is when it's a it's a mission and you have to look at every single one instead think, of just going yeah, up there and finding out what you're interested in. Well, yeah, and then... The fact the, that it's self-directed, is, is, is it could be fun. When the random bloater wanders into a space that you already looked and you, you're like, wait, I'm <laughs> done, but it doesn't where did, let me... Where did that guy go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Like, donut shop. Yeah, Takuro, even Takuro, who is, you know, criticizing the mission, was saying, yeah, I do that at the start of every breakdown level. I you know, climb up the nearby thing and, you know, look around and see what's near me, because you, cause you got to do that kind of reconnaissance if you want to survive. Well, for right? me, I do it usually to find specific things. Like, I'm looking for, because, yeah. like, I'm trying to establish certain outposts. I want to get a nice balance of outposts. So I'm like, I yeah. want the materials, I want ammo, and I want, like, to see the different locations. So I'm, like, looking for the materials buildings and the ammo yeah. and the, the gun stores and stuff. Takuro was like saying, you know, looking for vehicles a lot, especially with, like, like late game breakdowns. Yeah. You with want to try to, with everything a, you can to find the vehicles on the map. Without a yeah. doubt, that the, the idea behind that is something we like. The the actual uh, mechanics of it, uh, we have um, <laughs> thought really hard about how to improve things like that. Yeah, that's, that's a, like talking about what we've thought about is usually pretty safe. It's just talking about what we did that yeah. we usually can't. No, do. I'm not. I'm not saying <laughs> what we did. 
other than that we thought about something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I'm doing all sorts of good stuff for your game here, dude. Oh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, you haven't, you haven't killed anybody, have you? I haven't killed anybody. I've been playing the same character. I've established the best base in all of State of Decay. Oh, I absolutely agree. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what all you guys who make runs on the leaderboards think. I don't know why you go to that big base down there. Who would who would not spend time in here? It's the best decorated building in the whole yeah. game. <laughs> I don't Look at that. And it's got a, and it's got a closet. This. It's got a closet full of guts too. Not so. anymore. I cleaned that up. <laughs> really? Yeah. Mm, look. I don't know. Look, I organized it. Oh, Look at what? <laughs> oh. Look at that. Oh, wow, you built something. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty amazing. Ooh, it's cold. I'm no, cold. I can't get out of there. <laughs> I don't even, I actually will not even open that door until I fix it up because I don't like seeing the piles of... <laughs> the piles of gore that are there gore before. <laughs> but. So this is breakdown you're playing? Uh, yeah, this is, is that breakdown. Right? So, yeah, Kotaki says that Brant's probably obtained 75% of, uh, of my State of Decay 1 achievements. And I, I think that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, maybe though I have been present for all of it. Maybe so not even that, because yeah. there's actually a lot of our uh, achievements are, are breakdown related, and I almost never played breakdown uh, on my own account. Yeah, yeah, you basically just play it here, huh? Whoa! Screamer! Not anymore. Luca says, I've lost more people at the Alamo than any other base. <laughs> well, you know, the answer to that is you're just not playing it right, Luca. I mean, I understand that, that noobs like you, people who have very little experience in State of Decay, wouldn't really understand how to optimally play that base. <laughs> Luca is one of the more, more, more uh, prolific streamers. Yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> he, has, he has so many videos up. We should just, our website should just point to him to basically... <laughs> tell people how to play the game. But, uh, <laughs> Captain C. Baker said, uh, my son said, hey, that's a handicap spot. And he uh, said, uh, <laughs> it's the apocalypse. You can park where you want. There are no laws. That's true. <laughs> Actually, we should have it. We sh if you park there too long, you should get a ticket. There should be, there should be certain characters like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm okay with that. Oh, man, you yeah. shouldn't park there. No, you should just <laughs> randomly show up and there's a ticket on your front. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Signed Cletus. But, yeah, Cletus. Good old Cletus. Doing his job. Uh, Mr. Jedi Kyle says the Alamo's a death trap. <laughs> And Takuro says, I live at the Al Al Alamo every time. I did a few lower levels trying out all the other bases, and the Alamo has been the best for quick level-to-level -level runs. That's true. It is right in the middle of, uh, of the most sort of densely packed area. So, you know, if you want to just, you know, just sort of vacuum up a whole bunch of loot really fast, uh, Alamo is really well positioned. Savini's pretty good for that, too. And... <laughs> Und Undead uh, agrees that the uh, Alamo is a death trap, but uh, I would argue that for Undead Nicole, um, uh, lots of places are death traps. <laughs> so. oh, oh, I'm fired. Oh, smooth burn. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wild Arms just say that we should just spawn a cop zombie uh, next to the car. He's uh, just standing there, <laughs> shaking his head. Kids these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are agreeing that a zombie cop going around issuing citations would be hilarious. Done. Confirmed for <laughs> State of Decay 7. And Nicole just <laughs> confirmed that we now have a throwdown between me and her. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You lose. Probably so. Nicole, we love you. You know that. <laughs> Here's my apartment. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Full of lovely pictures on the walls. There's some Doug art. I think there's some mom. Yeah, there's it's actually pretty well maintained. It's my mom's art right there, Eric. Did you know that? Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. It's one of my favorite stories is that uh, mom, when she was still alive, the day we went live and, you know, we saw, I think we sold a million in the first 24 hours or something. And she was like, great. In 35 years of doing art, more people saw your or my art in your game in one day than than in 35 <laughs> years. Of Aww. Yeah. So uh, that's really sweet. <laughs> Takuro apparently had a character named Brock Choi. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. That just makes us so insensitive. But <laughs> yeah. You can't plan that. <laughs> Actually, can I borrow that? I want to oh. make that my character's name in online. <laughs> it's just Brock Choi. Brock Choi. Detective. Oh. oh, man. I cannot wait to talk about names later on. It's going to be fun. Yep. <sighs> I don't know what I'm doing. That, so is it near E3 time where we're allowed to start... Same. I don't, I don't after know. E3? So yeah. So after we've revealed more at E3, we've had people actually like you know, seeing more of the game. Uh, I think there's going to be some point, and I don't. I haven't. No one's made me any promises about exactly when or exactly what we'll be able to say. But there is a sense that there will be some kind of floodgate that opens. Maybe it's a tiny flood coming yeah. out. Maybe it's a large flood. I don't know. But that we, we will be able to show more of the game, talk more about the game, um, and. So hopefully, yeah, Brant and I can, can can ramp these things up, maybe do them more often, and just get more get a, a cavalcade of people coming through here, talking about what they worked on in the game, you know, walking us through nice. uh, their thought process and and just you know what their job is, and and we can get you know just a lot more build up a lot more familiarity I think between you know the fans of the game and the people here at the yes. studio. And was, we can unburden yeah, ourselves yeah, exactly, a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. It's burning us up inside. <laughs> yeah, like none of us can talk about this for years. It's really true. I mean, that was yeah. such a huge part of of our process last time that it's uh, it's been really difficult to transition into, you know. So the, yeah, radio silence. Dealing with somebody else being in charge of all that uh, instead of us, like we. You know, I mean, it's probably for the best because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's definitely a, a huge trade-off, right? We <laughs> yeah. have we have the benefit of a very large marketing machine now. Oh, and yeah. yeah, and so, oh, no, so like, yeah. you know, we we are not we're not going to be making our own TV commercials, for instance. Uh, so Wait. if we if we want that kind of thing to happen, somebody else needs to be in charge of that. So you know, it's definitely there. There are some things we get, positive things that we get out of uh, out of that trade off. I was hoping to get my SAG card by by sneaking into our commercials, <laughs> and, and then I could you know start voicing again. But. Yeah, that sounds great. Because that's all the people want, right? Yeah, it's that's to, why people buy this is, game is to listen is to, to Alan hear talk. my stupid voice. <laughs> yeah. You know, he played Alan. Oh right? no, I know. Oh, yeah. Like every time, like I think you're you're multiple people possibly, right? I am. Well, yeah. Yeah, you're Wait, Alan, and then a lot of are random we talking folks. About because my ther- <laughs> I did in skip. The game. I did the skip game. therapy today <laughs> yeah. to come here. In the game, <laughs> when you're on and, your meds. Yeah, and yeah. he's also he's also uh, uh, what was it? What did it call Colonel Peel? Uh, oh, doghouse. Yeah, he's yeah he's doghouse uh, in Lifeline. That one was that uh, was the voice, yes. voice like yelling at you over the radio. That no, was. I just I, I finally got through the Allen kind of a storyline in that and I, I we, weeped a tear <laughs> for you. Really? I, so, for I saw friends. it as you. You're the only one. <laughs> I had I had friends call me up at like 2 o'clock the day after we shipped and said, dude, I just shot you in the face. <laughs> oh, and I and I just realized that uh, I've forgotten this. Han just reminded me that, uh, that we also gave your voice to uh, Walter DeGrasse, the guy in the, oh. uh, in the big giant like <laughs> hazmat suit in Breakdown. Well, so it was, that guy's you too. It was a lot of fun to be able to, to um, contribute to the game that way. Um, I will cede that difficult work to the professionals because <laughs> voiceover work, uh, when you're trying to really convey something important, um, is really tough, yeah. and especially in that kind of. Scenario, I was like, not good at it. I did not have the range. context is so dynamic <laughs> and changing. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a, a weird place. You know, I could I could uh, you know speak extemporaneously all day. I can't actually be a character. Like acting is not a thing that I'm that I'm good at. I wouldn't even begin to try to do that professionally. That so. said, I thought you did great, Brand. Yeah, I know. I thought I, yeah, I thought I thought you're awesome. I love guys, I loved Alan. Really sorry. Oh no, we we actually we need to be hey, gone. Guys, anyway. I love you. Bye. You know, we're, it's two o'clock. We need to be done. So uh, yeah. thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, sorry for the abrupt ending, but uh, we just suddenly realized we're late, and we've yeah. all got really hard jobs. <laughs> so I think we're, as as is tradition. I think we'll just uh, we'll go out with a bang. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, normally uh, this is our favorite thing. I like what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, so All right. come on, come on, come on, little guys, you can do it. I want to stay right near the car, you know, just in case, make this a little more spectacular. I'm not exactly sure what you're going for. Oh no, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh, come on! Oh! See, when you're trying to die, it almost just feels lame and pathetic, right? Just... Are you just trying to get killed? I'm just trying to get killed, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Boom! Oh. Blaze of glory! 
So is that if you just have it equipped? If you have it equipped and then you hit the button while you're dying. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's excellent. Explode. One of our lesser known features, but one of the more fun ones. Oh, that was my last playable character. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded a game clip of my death. That is a blaze of glory. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming and extra special yes, thanks yes. to Eric Anderson for, uh, for, for joining, joining us. us. And that was uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> so we definitely have to when we can talk more about what the crap he's working on, uh, we will have Eric back again sometime in the future, and yes. we will hopefully have all you back too. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back here next month, and of course, uh, come here you know every week on Wednesdays to see Nicole's stream. And uh, that is it. See you all later. All right, bye guys.